in the changing world order, Russia sees itself as a lonely, self-standing great power in the north of a huge Eurasian landmass. And uh, sitting where it does, Russia looks at the Middle East as part of its vast neighborhood. Uh, it's not that far away from uh, the heart of the Middle East. You're talking the Caucasus. It's very, very close. Also, the Middle East is uh, predominantly a Muslim part of the world. And uh, Islam is uh, one of the indigenous religions in Russia. So there is a connection uh, along Muslim lines between uh, some nations, some ethnic groups within the Russian Federation and uh, their neighbors to the south. Uh, the Middle East is also a highly dynamic region, uh, a region of uh, big opportunities. There's wealth here in parts of the region. Um, there are opportunities for uh, commercial ties, uh, opportunities for various uh, business projects for Russia. But it's also uh, an area uh, replete with dangers. There's extremism here, and uh, there are terrorist groupings here. And uh, for those groupings, uh, again, Russia can be a, a, a target. So the Russians are looking at the region as a neighbor, as an opportunity, and as a security concern, all at the same time. Well, things are not getting easier for Russia. Uh, the pressure is uh, the pressure from the U.S. and I would say its allies is uh, is likely to grow. I think Russians believe that not only the sanctions will not be lifted anytime soon, or maybe in the lifetime of many people who live in Russia today, but that they uh, are, are more likely <clears throat> than not to be uh, increased. Um, even in, in, in the coming year. So they look at the relationship uh, with the United States uh, in the following way. It will get worse before it will get even worse. So the dynamic is uh, pretty, pretty negative. Um, there may be, uh, in this confrontation between Russia and the United States, uh, there may be flare-ups uh, some of those flare-ups can happen in uh, the Middle East, each other. In Syria, both, I think in 2018, there were at least uh, two cases when uh, the United States and Russia could have come to blows directly, and they uh, narrowly escaped that. Um, there is a conflict in Ukraine, which is not getting uh, quieter, uh, against the backdrop of the Ukrainian presidential campaign and to be followed by the Ukrainian parliamentary election campaign. Uh, and lastly, as you mentioned, there is uh, this uh, danger of a new arms race uh, resulting from the U.S. withdrawal from the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty that banned uh, medium-range missiles globally, uh, including in Europe. So if, uh, some, if, if the missiles are back in Europe, I hope they are not, but if they are, I think the United States and Russia will come pretty close to the brink of a, of a, of a major conflict. So it's, it's pretty dangerous. If it goes down that road, I don't know whether it will. The United States says it doesn't have a, an intention to uh, deploy its medium-range missiles in Europe, but uh, you have to make allowance for that possibility.